Hello there, my name is Richard from Silent Peak and a very warm welcome to you. Today we're having a look at Luminar Neo's Fall 2024 update. Uh, this is bringing us several new exciting features, particularly around a photo management, but also in regards to some photo editing as well. So let's have a look. And remember, if you would like to try Luminar Neo for yourself, you can. And in the description below, there is a link to your free Luminar Neo trial. So the first updates we're going to look at are regarding photo management. So the first of these new photo management features is the search tool. Here you find me searching for all images featuring a waterfall. And as you can see, we've got some images of a waterfall plus a few misfires. Here, we're going to have another go. We're going to look for photos of birds. And once again, lots and lots of images of birds, plus the odd picture of a flower and a sea lion. Next, let's have a look for all images uh, featuring buildings. And there we go. Pretty good result there. Uh, but aside from sort of giving us the odd misfire, uh, it also has a few sort of peculiarities. For example, here I've searched for people and I've got a photo of shells instead. Next up is the new filter system. So here we can sort of browse our photos by various properties, such as capture date, camera type. Here we're searching for all images with the ORF file format, which is the Olympus RAW. And we can also sort of create compound filters. So for example, we could search for all images, uh, sorry, filter for all images by a certain capture date taken with a particular camera. So in this case, uh, last year photos taken with an Olympus M5 Mark II. Uh, moving on to photo editing. Uh, this is a little thing, but quite an important thing. We now have the option to display the film strip at the bottom of our editing screen. So next up is color masking. Now, as the name suggests, what we're going to do is we're going to sort of sample the color that we wish to mask. So in this case, the sort of uh, bluish tone of the flower. Then we're going to adjust the range, which is kind of like a tolerance feature. So we can either be very specific to a particular color, or we can sort of expand it to sort of cover surrounding tones. And then we can apply whatever adjustment we see fit. So in this case, we're just going to sort of dial up and dial back the saturation, make those flowers uh, pop a little bit. Here, we're going to do something similar. So in this particular case, I'm going to use the color mask to select the green background. Then I'm going to adjust the range just to select just as much green as I like or wish to. So in this case, I'm going to select most of the green. And then I'm simply going to desaturate the background simply for the sake of making those uh, wee yellow buttercups uh, pop out a little bit. Overall, it's a nice fun feature is the color mask and uh, a nice addition to Luminar Neo. So here we're getting on to the sort of headline feature, the color transfer option. So what this does is that you take photo A, you choose a photo B of which you like the color, and then you can transfer photo B's color uh, two photo is. So in this case, I'm actually using a screenshot I grabbed from the new Blade Runner movie. And as you can see, it kind of does look a little bit Blade Runner. We can sort of adjust the effect. We can sort of dial it up and dial it back. In this case, I've gone full on Blade Runner. And overall, I've got to say, I love this new feature. Uh, so here we are, we've got the before. This is as sort of taken in camera plus the color transfer of the Blade Runner uh, screenshot. Pretty good. So let's do that again. Once again, uh, we're gonna take a screenshot of Blade Runner. So this is the part where Ryan Gosling's character goes out into the sort of Las Vegas style place in the desert. And I am gonna apply that aesthetic and uh, to this sort of beach image. Overall, I don't think this is the right image for this tone, uh, but it perhaps serves as a good sort of demonstration of uh, what you can do with this feature. Finally, one last demonstration of color transfer. And because I'm a little bit of a geek, I have actually gone for Bioshock. Now, Bioshock is a video game with a very memorable uh, sort of scene featuring a lighthouse at the beginning of the game. And here we are, we have taken the Bioshock lighthouse aesthetic and applied it to this particular image. Uh, once again, you can sort of see the effect sort of the original out of camera sort of colors and then our Bioshock image colors. 
And finally, we have some new improvements to the generative AI features, namely Generase, Gen Swap, and Gen Expand. Uh, apparently, they are better than ever, more reliable and quicker. And sort of anecdotally speaking, uh, I would say that it feels true. Uh, it does feel a little bit faster. However, it's incredibly hard to test these features as you get a different result each time you use them. So it's it's sort of difficult to establish what a baseline is, what standard we should be aiming for, and what our reference is to measure against. Uh, nonetheless, Gen Erase uh, remains a uh, impressive in its potential and sometimes you can get absolutely stunning results uh, such as this one here where we're erasing the bee uh, and sort of rebuilding the flower as it uh, sort of stood behind it. So that's the Luminar Neo Fall update. Now if you have not yet tried Luminar Neo you certainly can and there is a link in the description below to your free Luminar Neo trial. I recommend you check it out, it's a lot of fun. If you'd like to know even more about Luminar Neo, do feel free to drop by my full comprehensive Luminar Neo review over at silentpeakphoto.com. Here you'll find about each of Luminar Neo's features, what I think of them, and also be able to sign up to my weekly newsletter and receive discounts as they turn up. I do hope you found this video useful. My name's Richard from Silent Peak, and I wish you a great day. Bye-bye.